unboxing the dip kit. Scuff pad and tack cloth. This is the flat clear. Hydro Vader. And the tin paint. I'm guessing that's the activator. All right. The film. And the instructions, I'm guessing. Yep, instructions. All right. Cool. This is the tumbler that I'm going to be hydro dipping. So we need to clean and degrease it. This is the tan paint. Wow, that looks like shit and a half. So, as you saw, my first attempt at hydro dipping something um, did not go well. So, with that being said, I'm going to have to try it again. The thing is, is like, this is a really cool custom steering wheel however um, the inside of it is engraved 
and uh, I've been wanting to do some with it because I mean it just it sits on my wall I'm never gonna use it so I'm gonna tape off the inside of it and try this again and maybe then it'll work all right so Go ahead and scuff it up, make sure that the surface isn't all glossy anymore. Um, and, uh, well, I'm gonna wipe it down first, then make sure it's scuffed, and then uh, restart the hydro dipping process because my initial um, try at it did not go well. Is this even gonna fit? Okay, it does. Whew. I, for a second there, I was like, wait a minute. Is this even gonna fit in my bucket? But it does. So I'm gonna go ahead and scuff this up, wipe it off, scuff it up, and um, yeah, we'll uh, get started on that. First coat going on here. Let that dry for a couple minutes and then um, we will make sure that it is fully coated. Might take a couple of coats. So we'll get back to that in a moment. Alright, now the uh, steering wheel has a nice even coat of tan all the way around it. Now we'll let it dry and uh, Get ready to dip it. All right, now that the paint is all uniformly dry, I am going to measure out the uh, film that I need and cut it to fit, because I don't want it to be too big. Um, but I do want it to cover the whole surface, so. All right, so I got the film in the uh, water. I'm gonna give it a few seconds before I hit it with the activator um, so that it'll expand out to the size that it needs to be expanded at. Honestly, getting it in, it did get a couple wrinkles and that is gonna show in the steering wheel. However, I'm hoping it's just, those wrinkles are kind of in the, uh, more in the center than the outside because the steering wheel is, it's only gonna be around the rim of the steering wheel. So hopefully you don't see too many of those wrinkles. It's not great, but it's not terrible. Take a look at that. Now we got to go rinse it under some warm water for a few minutes and make sure there's no uh, sliminess left on it. There's definitely some wrinkles. You can see some wrinkles in it, but that versus this. So, yeah, 
much, much better outcome. Wow. Way, way better. Uh, this I sh definitely should have done in like, like this. I went in like this thinking it would stretch. Yeah, this is a hundred times better. All right, let me go rinse it off. All right, this is a flat clear. All right, so this is the finished product of the first attempt at hydro dipping. Um, this is that Arctic mud. And honestly, I am very uh, disappointed with the results. Um, many mistakes were made. I dipped it in basically straight down thinking that's the way I needed to do it. But honestly, especially for a tumbler, I should have gone down at like a this angle versus going down like this. So I thought it was going to wrap up like that. Honestly, I should have gone this way and then let it wrap all the way over. Um, but because I did it like this at this angle, you can see the film didn't stretch all the way over and didn't make it all the way around so I made another attempt with the steering wheel the steering wheel turned out a lot better but I did I did learn a lot from this process you know um, again putting it down this way instead of this way um, making sure that there's no wrinkles in the um, in the film um, when you lay the film in, make sure the basin is big enough. The basin was big enough for this, but it wasn't quite big enough for the steering wheel. Steering wheel, I needed probably another five or so inches on either side uh, to really get a good dip in to make sure there was enough film and everything. So even on the steering wheel, um, on the very bottom of it, it didn't um, wrap all the way around, but it got most of the way around. Um, this one, you can see that the pattern is very stretched. Um, so on, on the bottom, it's, it's good. Lots of air bubbles. Um, it being concave the way it is, um, I didn't think about that and the air bubbles and whatnot. So a lot of air bubbles were trapped actually underneath this when I went in. Um, and then again, you can see that the pattern is very stretched. Now, is it... Now that I've been looking at it for a while, I, I do like it. It does look good. I did learn a lot from the process. It is very far from perfect. I would not sell this work um, or offer it to my friends or anything like that until I got a lot better at it. Uh, so uh, luckily I've got plenty of film left. I've got activator and everything. So I will, you know, uh, practice a little more and see if I can get any better at it and see if uh, you know it's something that I can start doing all right so here is the final product of the steering wheel um, as you can see it has pattern all around the at least the front of it um, there's no pattern on the spokes uh, there are definitely some wrinkles but there it is, a one-off, hand-engraved, jimmy-up, Dragon Ball steering wheel that has been hydro-dipped, camouflage. Uh-huh. I don't know if I brought the value up or down on the steering wheel. However, it actually turned out pretty cool. I. Uh, it's, again, it's not perfect, and I've learned a lot from doing the process. Um, definitely a lot more practice, and uh, I don't know, this looks pretty cool.